All right, let's switch it up. Seven viewers. Good place to start. Tech and boss seat to be working, excuse me. One of my earphones on the Or is it just that one side stopped working on me? So you guys know how I do. Moveless from top to bottom. If you have non-Armor King related questions, you can feel free to ask them. And if I know it... So off the top of my head, you may be wondering what makes Armor King different from Regular King, especially now that Regular King got down three, right? Regular King has this now and has that now, right? And not only that, but Regular King got the buff versions of that. Armor King didn't get those buffs. Same with 2-1. 2-1. There's a damage buff for Season 2. Regular King. Now, they both have giant, giant, giant swing. <laughs> you know? They both have a Shining Wizard variant, and they both have juggles that evolve the Shining Wizard, right? Shining Black for Armor King. Uh, what, one thing that you will notice right away is Armor King has a traditional cross dash. Which is to say he can wave dash, right? As far as making this threatening, he doesn't have any sort of health sweep out of it, obviously. But, first of all, we already know he has Dark Upper, right? Amazing with Punisher, really high damage he gets off of it. You've probably seen the Twitter jungles, right? Second of all, we know he has some gimmicky shit like that. Unblockable high that wall splats at is kind of fast. But, out of this, you could also do Instant Shining Wizard. And... You could do, I'm gonna get it. If you get some practice, you could wave dash into giant swing. Which is to say you have a 50-50 throw break mix up out of wave dash. That's kind of how you get people to duck. On top of that, he has this Lariat cross dash one, which is I believe plus eight on block. Plus eight, plus six on block with pushback, which uh, is negated at the wall, I'm sure. And it does a nice chunk of damage on him. I'm sure it gives great Oki. I don't know what Oki it gives specifically, but you know. He has some strong crouch dash options is what I'm getting at here, right? And then not only does he have, like, if you have trouble executing this on command as a whip punisher, first of all, that's your goal. That's your destination. You want to get good at fucking dark upper whip punishment, right? Even from back here. It's just, you know. Well, see, I'm not a machine player, so there it is. See? You, you add a little dash to the input, you get a ton of fucking range on this, right? Great whip punishment. But then he still has the forward 2-1, which is really fucking good, obvious, right? Negative 9, but obviously it's duckable. 15 frame starter. First hit counts as an elbow, so it cannot be countered by your standard counter. Uh, FYI, dark upper is unsafe. Negative 10, I believe. You get negative 10 on the dots, so it's not safe. So you can't just randomly throw it out like you can on electric. That's not an electric. Stop calling it an electric. It's not electric. It is 14 frames when perfectly executed, no inputs wasted. 14 frames fastest. Animates at 11 frames. 14 frames with inputs included. Um, and then on top of that, he also has a hop kick like King. Uh, but King's is a hop knee. He has the traditional old school generic hop kick animation. What's up, Angel? Uh, he does still have the low draw kick. He does have his version of down one, uh, down three. Plus one on hit, just like regular King stole it, you know? Which sets up Giant Swing greatly, you know? So he has good poking. And then the other thing that he has, uh, he has like two, he has a couple of key differences, obviously. He also, by the way, out of Crouch Dash, he has um, Chain Grabs. His drink Chain Grabs are not as good as regular Kings because you could break them at each part of the throw. Kings, you'll get like two grabs in before you get the next break chance if you fail the first break. But much like King out of Crouch Dash, it's uh, unseeable 50-50. You have to guess one or two. And they're executed with cross dash 2 plus 3 or cross dash 1 plus 4. So, yeah, his hands always look like 1 plus 2 bricks. You can also do full crouch for grass, by the way. Like, uh, what's a full crouch grab? Uh, like that. All right. So, he has DDC. See? Oh, he has that. You can do that from crouch. So, you can do his crouch grass from wave dash too, just like uh, Kazuya, right? You can do his crouch grass from wave dash. So, a lot of 1 plus 2 breaks to mix up. Your shining, uh, sorry, your giant swing, and your uh, multi-part throws. 
So yeah, uh, the other big thing he has is this. Now I know people think are starting to think newer people are starting to think this is a gimmick because you can get away from every follow up. Uh, that's you're not thinking about this in the right way. The thing that used to make this cheap, one of the many things that used to make this cheap, is throw breaks used to be um, you have to press one or two. Now that's ruined because you can press one or two for generic throw breaks. The reason that used to be so good is because when he's back turned, it looks like a one plus two break. So he can mask his uh, regular throw breaks. See? When you do generic throws from back turn off of this. And then you would use the elbow to get people to stay still even if they block the first hit. By the way, he does that really cool kick up out of that if it connects. Sorry. Uh, the back elbow. Boom. Kick up. Same thing with the... Uh, back elbow <laughs> for, for one plus two. once upon a time in Tekken 6 this was safe on block you could tech off of this now if they block it they get a guaranteed grounded hit on you so it's not safe but it's not super punishable either there's no like floating him for juggles for the most part I don't know Tekken 7 has weird shit in general so I don't know for sure but still 3 plus 4 is really good still because you can still do the generic back turn stuff like a 10 frame low kick that's plus 3 Right? Generic down four from back turn, just like Feng Wei. You can still do this is like a common, super popular thing to do to people. To get them to duck, and then you can do whatever the fuck you want when you're ducking when you're back turn. The general idea is to get them afraid to press using the elbow. And then you do this. You can also press people for it again to go the other way, which is fucking cool. It's all sorts of goofy shit you can do with this move, you know? And it just covers so much range. So much. Uh, it used to float in a way that you could like follow it up in second tag too, but that doesn't matter because there's no tag assault here. Um, the other key thing that he has that regular can also have is a very fast shoulder. So that gives him a good uh, wall combo ender. It gives him a, a lot of good shit, basically. He can do a lot of like jab, ba, and then shoulder for a low wall hit, that kind of stuff. 13 frame shoulder, and like many other shoulders, a lot of range on it. So it's a great punisher. It's a great up close with punisher. It's, uh, if you need something really fucking fast, uh, you know, it's really good. A shoulder is always a good thing to have. Anything that's negative 13, that pushes back a lot, bam. And then when it gets to negative 15 and it pushes back a lot, you should be doing this, but you also have that as an option. So he has great block punishment. Obviously, hop kick is 15 frames also, but the range is limited. So basically, he has a great range of punishment, right? A great range, right? Good 10 frame, uh, great 12 frame punish, uh, great 13 frame punish, Great 14 frame punish if you're good. If you're not good, then this is a great 15 frame punish. Uh, that's also a great 15 frame punish. And if there's a lot of pushback involved and you can't reach with your other stuff, he has a great 13 to 15 frame punisher there too. So 13 to 14 rather. 15, you probably want to switch to this. So yeah, he's a great block punisher. I don't know about his wall standing. He could hop kick from crouching, so he has 15 frames. There's a 16 frame wall standing. He has a standard while standing for 11 frames. Uh, and then it gets weird, right? His while standing two is a counter hit, 12 frame. You know? So he has a good range of punishment too, but his while standing punishes, is, uh, you know, not, not quite as good. Basically, it's 11 frame by. I see no reason to do this as a block punish. And then at 15, you launch with that. I know he has like a weird... He has a weird, uh, some weird full crouch options in general. I don't know how to do them just yet. We'll get there. Lost any third. So yeah, he's got a lot of cool, unique tools, and uh, those are the big ones that I remember off the top of my head. I'm sure there's a lot more I'm forgetting right now. Uh, also, he has the spin. He has his own version of the push, just like Kinging uh, and Marduk do. They all have these pushes that do crazy shit on counter hit. He's no exception. He always had that, by the way. That's not new. Any questions so far? How good are his mids? Are Dude, he has generic down forward one. That's the only mid you mid poke you need. I think AK does usually get way better Oki than King. Yeah, the Oki specific stuff. Oh, thanks for the host. Oh man, two games. The Oki specific stuff, I'm not going to get too crazy with because I know he, just like regular King, you guys got to hit a margin for that stuff because he already knows the tech. There, there's such, there's so much unique tech with these characters because of their weird knockdown angles and shit and then the, the uh, burning knuckle. How the fuck you do it? Oh, you hold it for him. 
the fucking burning knuckle setups. There's a ton of that shit going on with these characters. So if somebody knows his stuff going into, you know, when I get to a move that talks about, uh, you know, these specific knockdowns, if you know this kind of stuff, feel free to tell me. I don't know. There's a lot of very angle-dependent stuff that are exclusive, almost exclusive to, like, King and Armor King. You know? Like, think about the way King's down forward 2-1 knocks down at that weird-ass angle and all the crazy shit he gets because of that. That kind of shit, you know? Uh, so yeah. King has, uh, Armor King has no shortage of range with punishes. Also, obviously, I already talked about it. Oh, we got shoulder. Sorry, that's not shoulder. What, what shoulder? There, we got shoulder, we got forward 2-1, and we got dark upper. That's all you fucking need. You don't, you know, don't get greedy. You don't need anything beyond that. If you, if they recover ducking, go with like a shoulder. If they recover standing on their whip, dark upper is your friend. So you guys picking up what I'm putting down? What's this one? Mm, yeah, like high damage mids that are safe or something like that. You're getting greedy. Uh, what is frame data on cross dash one? Plus six on block. With a lot of pushback. It used to be plus eight, I think. Alright, so. Uh, rage art, rage drive. Alright, what I will say about his rage drive, everybody knows this by now. He gets 13 frames. 13 or 14? I think 13 frames to input an unbreakable grab of any of your choosing. Unbreakable throw. He can get tombstone, but he has to be like right in your fucking face to do it. Which is uh, unusual. You're probably not gonna get that too much mistakes. At the wall, you'll be able to get tombstone, sure. But otherwise, you're not really going to get Tombstone very often. So, get good at basically Instant Shining Wizard after this. Not enough frames for a um, Chain Grab. I, I'm pretty sure Majin tested that. So, starting from the top. 1-2 Punch, standard 10 frame, right? 17 damage. Plus 5 on hit. Pretty generic so far. Minus 1 on block. He also has a 10 frame jab, plus 1 on blocks. Usual shit, plus 7 on hit, I'm sure. Or plus 8. Plus 8 on hit. So pretty much standard for jabs, right? Uh, jab range looks pretty average. Right? Pretty average on jab uh, jab range, right? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe a little above average. I don't know. It could just be him moving back and forward and walking into my jab. I don't know. I love his neutral stance. How he steps forward and back. I always love that shit. It seems a little less pronounced now than it used to, though. But yeah, um, Jabbering Team's alright. Much like King, he has 1-2-1. One, one. Unlike King, I don't know if he gets the free stuff on counter hit, though. Does he? Oh! I don't think that happens for King. But, that knockdown doesn't guarantee anything. So, I might say that regular King's is better. Because regular King's gives him uh, plus 10, and he gets a free 1-2 one, two or 2-1. Two, he doesn't get that off of 2-1. Only 1-2-1. So, 1-2-1 one, one is a crouch check. Alright. Nothing special if he just hits you ducking. It's plus 5, though. And it does do a good chunk of damage. 17 damage is nice, considering it's fucking only negative 5. I think King's is negative 1, isn't it? So, not as good as King's. But, that knockdown is plus 31. Nothing guaranteed off of it, but you get plus 31. It does push back, so careful with that. That might be a decent setup for shit like his uh, his spit. Bad breath. Green mist. Great Muda spit. Uh, might be a decent setup for his rage drive spit. But yeah, that knockdown used to give free stuff. Yeah, so he also has 2-1. So, 2-1 will be his actual good 10-frame Punisher. 22 damage, good damage for a 10-frame. And plus 5. So, basically the same frame matches that 1-2 gives you. So, 2-1. Plus, it's um, high mid, which is nice. And this is also negative 2 on block. Alright, wait. Negative 5. Hmm. Once upon a time, this was uh, 0, 2-1. Negative 2 on block is not the end of the world, but, you know, you'd rather take... Uh, <laughs> A um, zero, obviously, because it sets up sh you know shit like uh, giant swing and shit like that. Ten frame grab. Uh, the thing, the thing that you got to note about this is if you are in those situations where you're dealing with a negative ten move or negative eleven move that pushes out a little, you cannot hold forward to add range to this like you can with forward one two. Forward one two is a semi-universal way to add range to your jabs. 
cannot do that with forward 2-1 because you're going to get forward 2-1. It's already a move. So you got to stand still and get 2-1. So you're limited to whatever range you get on the 2. Which, as you can see, is not quite as good as 1. You know? See? Not quite as good as a 1 jab. Especially if I hold forward, right? Let's see if I can find a... Yeah. So a little more range on the 1 jab when you hold forward. But this is still pretty reliable. And the cool thing about it is if you get those people, those shitheads that like to duck after stuff, the mid will check them. You know, it won't give you much reward, but it's a nice, you know, just in case the two whiffs just bam. So it's good in the neutral too. Mid high jab strings are always good for that reason. Dark Cyclone. Damn, this move is here already. This used to be mainly a jungle filler. I don't know about the purpose of this move outside of that. It is a natural combo. Mid high, 17 frame startup, 30 damage knockdown. Uh, maybe some guaranteed follow ups? Right. Anybody know this is guaranteed follow ups? What's up, Haruka? What's up, Stelios? Happy holidays. Does AK have any pronounced weaknesses? Not broken, but seems to it all. I don't know how I'll get there. Uh, might have weak, uh, while standing punishment, yeah. So far, yeah. His while standing punish is a little weak. I do think he's actually pretty high risk, too. From what I recall, he's actually kind of risky. Not super high risk, but he generally has to take some, uh, big risks. Sometimes. If I recall correctly, I'll, you know, we'll get there. Um. So, is there any guaranteed follow-ups after this? I gotta record it on myself to find out. I don't remember if they used to knock back like this. Knock down, rather, like this. Start with that. That's guaranteed. Yeah. So he definitely gets guaranteed follow-ups. Uh, do you know about the combo? I don't care about the combos yet. Oh, I do. I do care about good guaranteed follow-ups off of this. You got something for this? Let me go in order here. I don't want to go all over the place too much. Uh, so obviously he gets uh, follow-ups here, right? The idea is, uh, the question is, what's the best follow-up? That's not like super hard. Twenty-four damage is not bad. Yeah, down four, four, four. There you go. That's an easy, decent follow-up. Forward four. Oh, four, four could be good. Because that could, that looks like a, a good Oki. Down four, four, four doesn't give it out any Oki. That looks good. I like the way you think, Angel. Now, in case you're wondering what the risk is, obviously it's mid-high and it doesn't jail. Right? He does have a mid option, though. I know that. So, you got four, four that keeps him right in front of you. The question is, what happens if they stay down and then... That way, let me record it on myself again. Okay, then you can tech. But you're teching right in front of his face. So how about this, right? Yeah, oh, ho, 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 you tech in his face and he is a really good advantage, basically. But you don't want to delay it. As you can see, when I teched... See? When I teched, I'm already blocking his 13 frame mid poke. So if you do anything that's too slow... Ah, uh, nah. Actually, nah. That's actually really fucking good. The moment I tech, I'm already blocking his 13 frame mid poke. Not only that, look at Tekken Bot. You see that? Down forward one. It's hitting on active frame number two. So his down forward one is zero in that situation on block. So we know that the moment I tech off of that stomp, I'm blocking on frame number 14. If he does a, uh, a 13, an actual 13 frame move that reaches, it's gonna whiff, right? Let's see, the shoulder have active frames? It has three active frames. Okay, so that's not a good example. Do I have a 13 frame move? Well, like for example, back one is gonna whiff, right? But, uh, I don't have another example of a fast mid. Mm. 
hate active frames. That's a good setup. So that's good Oki off of this thump after that. So 14 frames or slower. Basically, armor activates on frame 8. So make it 14 to uh, 16 frames if you don't want to get interrupted by armor by those people that like to match wake up rage art, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's good. So uh, I definitely input it that slow. Thumbs up to that. So it's risky because it's mid high, but that's uh, that's good damage and good Oki. Good move. Well, decent move. Down forward force a fast mid. Oh, he has a 12 frame mid with one one active frame. So that's prop that should whip theoretically. He has a 12 frame mid. Go uh, armor here. if I tech. See? Too fast. It whiffs. You're lucky. Down forward one is set up for you perfectly off of that situation. But it is mid-high, so be careful with that shit. Next is... There's the mid option, right? Now... Oh, this is a natural combo. I think that kick has counter hit properties. It sure does. <laughs> Now, I don't know what the pickup is, but look at the angle. That's exactly what I'm talking about with King and Armor King. You get these fucking stuns. Just like how Paul... Think about what, what Paul does to you because of the angle off of his mid-punch, right? The homing punch on counter hit. King and Armor King have a ton of those kinds of setups all involving this fucking move because of the weird-ass angles, and that's a perfect example right there. I'm sure there's some sort of setup that Majin has found or something like that, right? But, you know... Obviously, so you got that. You do whatever the fuck the juggle is, right? Uh, I felt only two down fours were guaranteed from tech row. Uh, if I tech it, either way it goes forward four. It's a better option anyway, so whatever. So the mid option is very unsafe, as was mentioned in the chat. I know that. And that's part of what I'm talking about. Other characters that stuff like this, it wouldn't be like launch punishable. Oh, his isn't either, though. 13 frames. I think this used to be worse on block in Tekken Tag 2. It's only negative 13. It's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's a good risk to take. All right? And then if he hits you, he's plus 8 when he hits you. That's good, dude. For only negative 13? Depending on the matchup, like, for example, if you're fighting, let's say, Nina... I would whore the fuck out of this, because when she blocks it, she's just going to get, like, down forward one, two. Big deal, you know? Anybody that has, like, weak jab to 13-frame punishment, Brian is another one. I would, uh, I don't know if I would say I would whore this out. Let me take that back. But I would definitely use this more often against those characters. What's his count? His counter is punches only. I don't know his armor move. Oh, that was it, actually. I got counter hit out of it. So, yeah, even though there's a gap there, the ar it's not big enough for the armor move. That might be hit confirmable, guys. My scrubby ass can do it, you can too. Nah, I was too slow there. So, we're talking like edge case. If you're fucking sharp and on the downers, you could uh, probably hit confirm that raw. That's pretty good. What's the first hit on block? Negative 10, though. Alright. Let's not get too crazy here. It looks like it crushes highs. It probably doesn't. Right. Ooh. Tracks to his left. Uh, yeah. Pretty good tracker to his left. I don't know how Armor King sidestepping is. It might be average or it might be below average. Right. So it's a bit... It's got more going on than just being a standard jungle filler. 
Alright, round out kick. We're ready up to this move. I talked about this earlier, right? So, this by itself it has eight active frames. It does hit grounded. I don't know if it floor breaks, but uh, it does hit grounded. Oops, that's the new shit. And then if they don't tech, the elbow hits them grounded too, which is pretty sick. So if you ever get hit grounded by that, tech. And yes, the elbow is natural combo. <sighs> so, plus three up close. Yeah, plus three. This might be like thing where if you get them to block just the tip, you could get some free shit. Like a guaranteed down four, for example. Which means there could be Oki set up for this. I got plus eight. But it seems to push out too far. So maybe not. Maybe nothing guaranteed, right? Ideally, if you get it to plus ten, you can get a guaranteed back turn down four. But... That's not looking likely. It seems like even if I could get it to that, they're going to get pushed out too far. So, maybe off of Oki. Something specific. That's still frame number one, unfortunately. And, and they cannot tech off of that, right? <laughs> nope, don't do that. That would be it. When he blocked it, it was frame seven. Now it's frame two when he texts. Was that wrong? Yeah, frame seven. How about this stand? I just want to see if it's possible, not if this is a particularly good setup for it. No, then it's frame one hitting him. Ah, uh, well. I won't get too crazy over it, but uh, here's my guess. If you can get that to plus 10 off of a tech situation, you're going to get a guaranteed back turn down for it, for sure. What's taking my playing on now? I'm still playing on the Itoki only. I replaced my buttons, so... I got some nice buttons now. Let's see how long they last this time. All right, so on block. Up close, negative seven. Which means you can make it as good as plus one on block on the last active frame. So if you use this just spaced out like so many people love to fucking do, you'll, you'll be uh, around negative five to negative four. And spaced out, so. Obviously, careful with the whiffs on this, but, you know. And it's, like, awkward to whiff punish this sometimes. Because you'll hit him in the back, and you'll probably hit him at a weird angle because you're stepping. Ah, so you gotta hold it. This is the new shit. It's a high. I'm guessing this is unblock uh, unbreakable. They call it phenomenal because this is an AJ Styles move. Which is also his uh, wall, his wall run. It goes into this. Woo, that wall standing right into it. Oh, he recovers back turn. And then he can backdash it. So I, I saw, I saw the uh, Twitter, the Twitter talk about this. So yeah. 
could backdash it. You could probably sidestep it too. Surprise. And then you'll probably get him near the front. Nice. A little off access. Yeah, it's kind of gimmicky. I already knew this. Yeah, I know. Tag 2 had a lot of weird specific throws off footage that you had to do weird shit to break. For example, I think it was Jin Pachi. He had a throw that you had to break by holding down. I think it was off a of fly. They got rid of all that shit. It's either not breakable or it is. That's it, you know? So this is the body press one. I think there was some tech traps for this in the older game. But this also cobbles on normal hit. It's a hit throw. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's, <laughs> sorry. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, but it is zero on block, which is the most interesting thing about it. It's zero on block with uh, 11 active frames. I thought it comboed. Was this a nerf? Or is it, or am I remembering this incorrectly? <clears throat> I do think this is a thing that you could do during certain jungle lenders. You could do this and then a body splash. And if they tech, it'll hit them. Kind of like how regular king can do sometimes. Because it's active for the whole duration of the body splash. And that means it can hit you crossed up. Which is why it's a tech trap. Regular king has that going on. A Yusu on counter hit. There you go. What's up, means? So yeah, I'm sure he still has setups for this, for sure. Basically, it'll be something like he'll do a long-ass juggle. He will core screw you, connect with this, and then body splash. And if you tech, it's going to catch you. Shit like that, for sure. I'm guaranteed he has something like that. Maybe even at the wall. Uh, outside of that, uh, I suppose you could use this to fuck with people's heads, since it's zero. The gap looks big, though, because it is. <laughs> the back elbow will interrupt this, but this will not. Okay, he's, he's rolling forward because I'm connecting, and I got to hold back to block. That's annoying. Better. So let's see how big this gap is. 13. So if 13 interrupts and 15 loses, 14 frames, ooh, 14 frames is gonna exchange, right? So there you go. You recover crouching. Yeah, you might get a guarantee while standing four on him. You know, guaranteed 12 frame on him. Unless there's a way to get up. Can he take off of this? if he does nothing and just stays down can he still lost any form that could just be hitting me because I'm trying to get up thought so so there's some mind games going on here now I don't know if you're going to be able to uh, whiff punish that with anything major because his positioning doesn't really give him the low launcher. I had to time it. It's fucking weird. Yeah, that's not a punish. 
So maybe there's a timing in there where if you delay it just enough, you could get it to punish, but, you know. Yucky streamer alert. What's up, Ramen? Lilikin while standing four. Did anyone figure out if 2B is trash or not? I thought she was pretty weak from what I played. I don't know. I've been seeing some crazy-ass fucking uh, 2B tech on Twitter, so... She does a lot of damage. I know that much. <sighs> and then the old elbow. Now the elbow is a mid too, thankfully. <sighs> Negative 18 on block. So certain characters will punish this pretty fucking hard. I think. I don't know who, but I'm sure there are some characters out there that will... Uh... I have one idea actually of who, who might be able to. I'll test it in a second. Let me see what Armor King can do. Oh, wrong button. Ah, oh, it's a punish, but it's not a pickup. It's not like Capos. Sorry. If there's one character that might be able to pick up, I'm gonna guess no. It's probably gonna hit him the same way. I still feel like I gotta try. Not one character, two characters. It's probably gonna hit him away in the same way, but might as well be sure. Could probably be ground grabbed. Oh, it doesn't even hit him. Ah. Yeah, nothing. Bet you can't wait for two. I didn't even want to finish reading that sentence. Oh, I can wait. I can wait for sure. I'm kind of shocked that she wasn't made first, to be honest with you. I'm kind of shocked that these two made it before her. Are you kidding me? Never would I have bet money on that. Alright, Moonsault drop. You guys know this. You fought King before. Same thing here. Same kinds of setups where he'll, you'll tech and it's a tech trap unless you get up and jab him right away. He has all that kind of shit going on with this. Same usages. Same wall tech traps. He has the same shit. So, you know, do I really need to go over this move? It's unblockable. And in a lot of situations, you tech. You gotta, like, get hit by it unless you re re react in time and jab him. Get up right away and jab him out of the air. That's how that move works. Alright, so, you know. Much like regular King, minus the Marduk string. So, he only has mid-high option here. So, you have no reason to not duck this. You gotta duck this shit. 15 frames. And historically, this is tracked really well. I'm guessing the same thing ha applies here. Like, even if you use it in a neutral, which is one, usually one you use this move. This shit tracks. Okay, tracks to his left side. <laughs> so yeah, please, duck this shit. Oh, I came up with a combo. Shitty damage. That was some tattoo shit I tried there. There's not much else to say. First hit, you, you know this move. Just like Kings. Negative 11, yeah, that's bad. Uh, no counter hit properties here, I'm sure. Uh, does he get the guaranteed run up? 
Or did they not give him? They took that away from regular King. I know that, right? So he had to be. He has to be near the wall to get it. Just like regular King. Regular King used to get a guaranteed run up Ollie kick. So this definitely knocks back further. But if they're near the wall, they're closer to you, so you could get a guaranteed run up Ollie kick. The King version is negative nine. Yeah, it's worse. It's worse. Uh, that's kind of the weird thing, right? It's kind of just carryovers. This old string used to, uh, used to, uh, used to do nothing. What am I saying? I was about to say used to bound. No, now it screws. <laughs> it never did bound before. I think this is a counter hit string. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Oh my God. 16 frame mid. Oh, this is a good string. Is this Connor hit confirmable? Um, where do I set that again? I forgot where I set that. It's three, right? Okay, so maybe not. Like, you could react to noticing that you interrupted something, but I was wondering if you could react to the second kick comboing and then doing it. No, but you could definitely react to this kind of Dragon Off style. With like one to one. You could react to the first two, uh, the first hit. You could do the first two hits, react to the, uh, you know, to the, you interrupting something. Which means that it's important that the first two hits be safe, and they are. Negative seven. And it's mid mid. Good string. Very good string. And if you happen to hit somebody out the air, nice bonus is that it's a uh, core screw. So this is a very good string. Screw it, Sack. Yeah, what he just said. Look at this animation. You see that? That last kick? You see what it's doing to him? That means I get to continue my juggle after that. Ooh, if I don't suck. Like that. So your standard Tekken juggle, which is how you actually combo in this game for the most part, is launcher, you know, launcher, launcher, you know, shit like that, or some sort of stun that leads to a combo, like uh, that, right? And then you pick up with something. You do a couple of hits. You do a screw, corkscrew, whatever. And then you finish the combo. And uh, Armor King's typical combo enter is running throw. Shining Wizard, some may say. Oh. Like a shitty example. Huh, and basically, you will get that screw straight if you hit the opponent out of the air. So it's not just something you combo into. It is also something like a, a beneficial side effect of, for example, if they were to go for their own launcher that puts them airborne, like a hop kick. So if I were to interrupt this with this kick, it's going to turn into a combo of some sort. You know? You picking up what I'm putting down there? Like, uh, for example, if I connect the jab and do that. So, see? For those people that like to panic mash a hot kick because it goes over lows, low crush is what we call that. So yeah, this is a good string. Then the question is, oh, I had the recording already. Oh well. Ah, I thought so. Yeah. Okay, I get what's going on here. <laughs> All right. So they got to interrupt fast. So then the question becomes, what happens if the second hit connects on normal hit?
natural combo on normal hit. This is a good string. Now that last kick is a high, right? Yeah, it is. So there's another downside there. It's uh, ne still negative seven, but it's a high. Bad wave dash, bad wave dash. So, good screen. Any counter hit properties? Boom! Okay, no, it just knocks back. Good damage, though. Alright, wind up stomp. We talked about this earlier. Good move. Better than Marduk, that's for sure. Uh, plus 7 on hit, plus 2 on block forces crouch. This is a very good move. You could also use it out of this. Oops, if you don't fuck up like I did there. It used to be. That's a way to... I used to... There it is. There it is. I would see uh, Armor King players, including like Majin, do this out of Wave Dash. And it would confuse me, but you know. Good setup for uh, Giant Swing. Plus two. You only need plus one for that to be a frame trap. So might as well do it at plus two. That's a great setup for back one. Because if they come up with a 11 frame move... It's gonna interrupt if they come up with a 12 frame move, for example, Lee Chalan while standing three, or uh, Lays while standing three, it will exchange, which is in your favor in this game. So, you know, you gotta learn that conversion off of the weird ass uh, back one stun, but they mash after that on block. Boom! Right? Oop. And then you gotta learn that pickup, right? Oh, nope. It's a cool looking pickup when you get it, but. Oh, too slow. Wait, what's the. P That's still the pickup, right? It used to pick up higher than that. There it is. Okay. Nope. We need the big pickup. A lot of Armor King players complain about this. It's an annoying pickup. But, you know, there you go. It's also really low damage now in this game with the harsher scaling. He might have a better juggle for all I know. Like, compared to regular King's pickup off of this, it's way fucking harder, right? Uh, if you walk forward to size, something helps the pickup consistently. It's still really low damage. Now back to four. That's the new shit, right? That's new. Nah, still no good. Uh, try down forward three. What was it? Down forward one. One plus two, two. Down back two, four. It's a shining wizard. No, that wasn't it, right? Wait, down forward three. Oh, that's not it. You sure that's possible? Do I have to dash? You didn't mention dashing. It's not easy. Oh, that's a uh, Tekken tattoo shit. You're gonna put me in the Jogo Vortex Angel? Come on. Grab him by the fucking toe. This seems like he just randomly whiffs if you're like off axis. Cause you're hitting him at the tip range of this. Which makes you think if you're off axis, this is not gonna work. So if you're gonna do that, just do this. So you have some consist oh not even. Never mind. you think. <laughs> Marduk has to work a lot less to do one more damage off of his 15 frames. <laughs> That's still way above average for 15 frames, though. 15 frames, you're lucky to see, like, 63 damage, let alone 68. And then he gets even more off of this, which is one frame faster. Alright, so Stomp is a good move. 
doesn't track, I'm sure. It's also on the slow side, but that makes it a good Oki move because it hits grounded. And we saw earlier that it does that fucking stun where they bounce off the floor. That's good shit. This is a good move. King doesn't have this. Good Oki tool. Good move. Good range. Look at that. Just the tip. Plus four on the tip. It's six active frames, too. How much was it on here? Plus seven. What is that? 13 frames? How can I make this hit late? Man, you probably could get a guaranteed, uh, if you get this to hit as late as possible, you could probably get a crouch grab out of this. Oh, and then on counter hit, you definitely get a guaranteed ground throw, don't you? your ass up <clears throat> nothing guaranteed mid-stage by the way that's the key to breaking his ground throws like i don't know if he has a damaging two option mid-stage but his down back two plus four is just a pick up push which is only threatening at the wall oh yeah you can just wave that to hot kick by the way you don't even need to do this uh you don't need to do that you can just back <laughs> like regular gin Uh, can he test forward four after cross dash one on hit? Uh, so is your question if is it guaranteed? Looks like it might be. Lariato! Yeah, sure looks like it is. <laughs> Marta's gonna punch you in the feet. I need a knockdown that's not guaranteed, but gives a good amount of Oki. That's 23 frames. To test uh, what I want to test. We'll get back to it. Hammer Impact, currently his armor move. Formerly a bound move and a punch parry. So I guess this is a buff, right? Because this used to only be a punch parry. Now it's an armor move, so it's going to go through multiple moves. Unfortunately, since it's no longer a parry, that means the armor activates late, frame 8. So, it's not as good as, as being a reversal move. How is this shit on block? Negative 13. I mean, it is a semi-fast mid-armor move, so I get why, but, you know. I don't know. What, what does it give you on counter hit? Same shit. All right. Stomping. Ooh. Nah, that's too slow. So nothing guaranteed, huh? I mean, good Oki, but nothing guaranteed? Let's try down three. Oh, that's not it. Nah, nothing guaranteed, it looks like. I don't know how I feel about this move. <laughs> down forward one plus two. Oh, interesting. But that's too far. I like the way you think. But that's too far. Plus, you probably got other guarantee stuff off of that. This is the kind of shit you want to land near the wall. That kind of knockdown, you want to land it. Ooh, look at that. It hit him in the back. So basically, you run up down 3 plus 4 is probably guaranteed. Because if they try to get up, they're going to get hit in the back. Uh, Alright, so yeah. I don't know how I feel about this change. Not a great move. It feels like what they did to Miguel, right? His best wall splat, they made it an armor move, so it sucks now. Because it's negative 14 on block. <laughs> his best mid wall splat, which was his best wall splat before. It's like, how are you going to nerf Miguel's wall game like that? 
No fucking tracking at all. And then the shoulder. We already went over this before. 13 frame. Fast. Of course, like any other shoulder. Really bad on block. And you're right in his face, too. Yeesh. You're right in front of this motherfucker. It does have three active frames, but that's not going to make it safe on block. So, that doesn't matter. All it just makes is it's pretty consistent in how it, you know, in hitting. A lot of range. I feel like this has more range than Feng's shoulder. Look at that. That's a shitload. That is frame number two, though, so that's 14 frames. But that's still a lot of fucking range. Shit. I don't think there's any tracking on his shoulder, is there? Oops. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Oh, wow. Pretty big headbox on that, huh? I could probably walk around it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm wondering if that's actual tracking of Armor King is just bulky as fuck. That shit hit behind him. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't know if that's true tracking. I don't know. Uh, four plus one plus four and back three less A K punish almost anything. Correct. 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 Then we'll punish Brian three plus four. Shit has mad range. Yes, sir. Get fucked, Brian. You can't abuse that cheap counter hit. Shit. Brian has a lot of cheap abusable counter hit tools. That's kind of his saving grace because he doesn't have any lows. He has like one good low. Ah, standard down forward one mid poke. Plus seven on hit. Negative one on block. It probably tracks to his left side. Yep. Yes, sir. You know the deal with these. For those of you that don't know, how do you use a poke like this, right? Well. Yeah, think about the general flow of offense in second, right? Negative one, you could still move around, you could still step, you could still mash, right? He ha he doesn't have a, a uh, 11 frame counter hit tool, right? I don't think he does, but he does have a 12 frame counter hit tool, which is good enough, right? So think about this. In second, most mids, right, are from standing position. There's, uh, there's a, It's pretty rare to have a mid faster than 13 frames, right? And even when you do, it's 12 frames. Which means negative one into jabs is going to beat it out, right? So the idea is you do this kind of shit, and this back-to-back -back is not going to get launched typically on um, uh, um, interrupt-wise because launchers mostly 15 frames. Very rarely it's going to be 14 frames, right? And you're, not, you're very rarely going to see a fucking people throw out a 14-frame launcher after blocking like a down forward one. So down forward one, negative one into another down forward one is going to exchange with 14 frames. And most counter hit tools from standing that lead to full juggles are 15 frames. 14 frame counter hit tools are pretty rare, right? Mid, 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 mid. Specifically mid. Sorry, I should add that. Yes, there's faster highs. Mid counter hit tools that start juggles. Typically 15 frames or slower. Very rarely 14 frames. And when they're 14 frames, they're unsafe. Like Claudio. Right? So now that we got those basic... Got that basic guideline rule set out the way, right? You know that this, after this is blocked, you could uh, go for jabs, and it's relatively low risk, right? As far as being interrupted. It's relatively low risk, depending on the matchup and all that business, right? Um, this into this, depending on the matchup. Again, depending on how knowledgeable you are of the matchup, relatively low risk to do back-to-back, -back, which is why you see this often, right? These down forward one folks also move you forward, so you're still in their face. So it's also hard to escape from as far as backdashing goes, right? They can be backdashed, but it's a tight window. It depends on your spacing. Generally, when uh, they uh, space out better on hit than on block. On block, you're kind of stuck close to them, you see? You see how when I hit him, he backed up? But if, uh, if he keeps getting hit, though, you're going to hit him out eventually. See? You're still kind of like, you know, spaced out. Like, uh, you're still keep keeping up with him because you move forward, but it's much easier to backdash when it hits you. So the general idea is these are really obnoxious ways to bait some sort of reaction out of somebody because if you're holding the lead you could kind of like chip away at their health with this kind of stuff right and then we already know he has a really good low poke to go with this right but it's not a high crushing low poke and that's the key thing here because of that you sometimes have to bust out this right 
and haven't gotten up to this yet. So this is kind of his version of the generic down four, right? But it's 14 frames and it has a unique animation. But because of that unique animation, it has a shitload of range, but it does duck highs. So you kind of use this with this, with this, with this to kind of formulate your basic standard tech and offensive poking flow. He has the tools and then basically when you start to get certain reads out of this, like, oh, when this guy blocks this, he likes to do that. Well, then do your strongest option to beat that if that's your read and gauge your risk reward for that option. If you want to keep it safer, well, maybe you'll size up and do something safe. But if you read something, if you read that option, and you want to be riskier and you're confident you read, you might want to size up into, what is it, Death Sandwich. There is Death Sandwich, right? Which is riskier because it's unsafe, but you have the same kind of read. You get what I'm saying here? And that's your basic offensive flow in second. Right? This motherfucker likes to down forward one, it's a down forward one. Right? All right, so let's say, oh, wow, it's hard to sidestep in general. This might just be an Armor King thing. I don't know how good his sidestepping is. But it's kind of locking me down pretty good. This could just be like Dragunov's down forward one, where if he does two of them back to back, it's like impossible to sidestep. So what do you know? Down forward one to down forward one seems to, outside of probably Lily and Kazumi and Elisa and them, seems to keep him pretty covered as far as sidestepping goes. They'd have to step guard to block it. Otherwise, they're going to get hit. And then you're at plus seven, and then you could get to work, right? What about backdash? Oh, I have to keep backdashing. On the third one, I'll get away. If he did three. See, I'll probably get away on the third one. So two of these back-to-back -back solid sequence. So if your reaction is he jabs, well, then you do. Right? See? Gauge your risk. And the cool thing about having something like Death Sandwich off a sidestep is you could confirm it. You can confirm it. Remember the old hit confirm trick I told you guys? So let's do it into a jab into jab. Right? You could confirm this shit. Right? Confirm! 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 That's why having these built-in sidestep moves or really fast natural combo moves like a Kazumi or Heihachi down forward one too you use them all the same way except in the case of Armor King you have one that gives you a fucking juggle Death Sandwich! What's the first hit on block? Negative 12. So basically, you could do your own sequence going ba, and then you think he's gonna retaliate by swinging, so you go into this by itself. And then if you were right, you could react to the fact that they swung, and then you finish it. Of course, there's a risk involved because that's negative 12, but then you could still finish it, and there's another mind, another layer to the mind game. Cause you can finish it and then you know interrupt them and shit like bah and then you still get a fucking juggle on the second hit by itself and the move is called death sandwich damn it it's a good move so yeah mince liver a dumb name for a down forward one poke but it's a down forward one poke oh yeah so the reason why you want a high crush obviously is because jab is generally going to be the only thing that interrupts this it's a jab but this it's a jab will interrupt just about anything else other than a jab, you know? That doesn't high crush. And then you add movement. And then you go further into the layers. Alright, his 15 frame counter hit tool. Remember I talked about with mid counter hit tools, right? There you go. Formerly a bound move. But his is unsafe, right? Unlike a lot of other 15 frame counter hit moves, mids. Um, his is unsafe. A lot of them tend to be safe. Negative 12, which is kind of unfortunate. It looks like it has a good hitbox, though. And then the pickup is the new shit, right? Yeah, and then I don't know what the... Once again, we got a weird-ass angle here, so he probably has some fucked-up setups if you play around with this. 
Yeah, Slasher 2 got nerfed. I know. The first hit used to knock down by itself. A lot of down forward ones high crush. Because they always animate this way. Uh, side step left. What? Oh. Ah. It's not bad damage. All things considered. This probably tracks to his right side. tracks in both directions. I mean, that's why they wanted to keep this uh, unsafe. That's a pretty decent trade-off, you know? It's not quite Kazuya trade-off, but... I'm sure Lily could get around it in one direction. Ah, this is mainly a jungle filler, right? 17 frame. There's another counter hit option. Unlike the other one, it's safe, but it's also three frames slow, two frames slower. Negative five on block. This looks like has a good hitbox too. Plus five on hit. And then counter hit juggle, right? The angle is weird on that one. So, is there a jab crush? Uh, anything that is uh, considered ducking. So, my example with King, with Armor King was down four. This is good because it's fast. Um, there's something called a generic down four, which Armor King does not even have from crouching. Basically, that animation right there, most characters get that from full crouch, down four. And it's usually 12 frames, which is incredibly fast for a low. And it also high crushes, like very fast like it goes under any highs very fucking fast uh, high crush is just a fancy way to say that the move ducks at a certain point so for example right see 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 um, a lot of lows do that but not all for example that low doesn't high crush and then there's low crushes like, meaning to say they jump. Hopkick is the classic example. This low crushes at a certain point of the animation. You know, that late into the animation jumps over lows, I'm sure. You know, any of this shit. And then there's universal low parry, which uh, you press down forward and then you get a juggle. So whatever the fuck. And certain... There's rules to the low parry. For example, Marduk has a low that is a, a knee. Knees cannot be low parry. Alright, so... This looks like it'll probably track to one side. Let's see. It might not track at all, though. Yeah, there you go. also how you flow off of certain stuff like a slide or does he have a better flow for slide like does this was 4 work for that stuff is it like a beefy hitbox because this looks like the kind of thing you could pick up with uh you know with a float spinning lariats so yeah it's homing and it screws boom right so, notice the knockdown. We talked about this before. We're going to switch to a wall stage. It knocks down a little towards uh, the right, towards the screen.
Does a sidestepping move high crush? No. No, no, no. The general tell is the animation. But there are some weird animations that crush that don't look like they do also, so... It's not always a great tell. Tekken's weird like that, unfortunately. And there it is. Anytime you see that sort of knockdown, this is probably going to happen when you have the wall to uh, your side. So, when you're when the wall's to your right side, you got a homing mid juggle starter, that is. Let's see how it is on block. Negative seven on block, my bad. Oof. And it's a little on the slow side, though, 25 frames, which means step guard is good versus it. When the wall is here to their back, you don't get much. All you need is to be a little off axis, though, and then you can get a wall combo. What the wall combo is, I don't know yet. He has to take that side steps. She do. She does have that. That just means it side steps. It doesn't mean it crushes. Dragonaut is an example. He has that on both sides. When the wall is to his right side, Dragonaut's up 4-4. Four, four, gives a pickup of while standing 4. When the wall is to the dragon off's left, back three plus four, which is a punch parry, gives him a pickup of while standing four. It's a full jump. Whoop. Alright, so another special encounter hit. I'm pretty sure there's some uh where's the kick? The recovery is weird. It's like Mardix forward one plus two. You can hit the back. I got the back before on him. I just want to verify it here, then I record it myself. At least the low looks guaranteed. his back before, right? I'm not crazy. Hmm. Oops. Ah, there it is. See? I'm doing the wrong follow-up now. Okay, so wait, it's the way he's getting up, that's for sure. Yeah, if you hold back, if you hold up, all right. So you gotta hold back, but the low is still guaranteed for sure. He might get even better options guaranteed. No, that doesn't reach. Anybody knows if you guys anything better? Try three plus four. I just did. <laughs> if he has it, it's a tight window. Does that mean it can be countered by a jab? Yeah, if you uh, sidestep with them. Another way to beat sidestep stuff with linear moves is to sidestep with them. Look, if he sidesteps, it's a death sandwich, right? Right? If I retaliate with jabs... Oh, sorry, let's go the other way, because it's one of those. Ugh. Deeper sidestep. God damn it. Alright, let's do a down forward one, then. Oh, no, down forward one. Let's do a single jab.
Right? Okay, so yeah. A single jab doesn't track, right? Right? But I could sidestep with him. In either direction. Oh, he hit me so I have an advantage. I could hold forward for a bit. And I realign. I could hold back for a bit. And real and uh well, that was back one, but and realign. Or I could just do a tracking move. But generally you don't have to do a tracking move to uh, hit him with linear stuff. We already know that down forward one tracks pretty good. You know, what else doesn't track though? Let's see. Hot kick, uh, uh that already does. I mean it all kinda tracks, because I'm barely sidestepping. So I'm really just trying to catch a uh, a jab there. But yeah, the general rule of thumb is you can move with your opponent to hit them with linear moves. You just have to do it relatively quick. Remember, in second, you can cancel out of your movement very fast. It's kind of like smash, I guess. Oh, you said smash. Oh. Yeah, I said smash. Alright, so yeah, negative seven. And if you happen to hit him out the air, it will screw. Is there anything else to talk about this? Uh, run up, down three plus four worked, right? Uh, yeah, okay. Frankensteiner. This is pretty much exactly like King's. It's uh, not breakable. It is a special mid. So if you don't want to get grabbed, you can duck block it. It will grab you if you're standing. Oop. See? And then you can punish him by hitting him grounded. So whether you're guarding or not, it'll grab you. The only difference being, if, you, if you're guarding, it'll lose 15 damage. That's the only difference. So, if he happens to hit you out of a move or something, I guess. Um, I don't know if there's any actual setups for this, like Oki or whatever. whatever. I mean, I guess it's decent on Oki in general because it'll make your opponent want to duck block. But you can kind of react to that also, so it's kind of... But yeah, same as regular Kings. I don't think there's any difference at all. Uh, okay, need of combination. So you know how regular King has down 2-1 for the high crushing jab. He has down 2-1. Uh, down Did I say down 2-1? I meant down 1-2. Armor King has down one form. You have to press it really fast to get it. Uh, much like regular Kings, it's unsafe. I don't know if they're both negative 10. Uh, and just like regular Kings, it needs a counter hit. It is 10 frames, so it's a crouch jab. Plus 6. Pretty nice. You can use it in the same way you use regular Kings. Just kind of augments his... Uh, when you're under pressure, you got a really fast, high-crushing 10 frame counter hit, so it's only negative 10. How much does it say about that? I don't think the knee does anything on its own. Blackjack combination is the new wall combo shit, right? Yeah, he does the uh, Jushin, Thunder, Liger, Rolling Kapu Kick. Jushin, Thunder, Liger has done that during an actual MMA fight. If you know who Loki is, he's he still does this, I'm sure. He's the MLW champion right now. This is new shit right here. They showed this off as a wall combo. Now, he recovers very slow. Yeah, very slow. Damn, that second hit has a ton of range. All right. Someone knocking. Negative 11. That's not bad. Oh, I, I could probably sneak around this. Alright, I'm gonna guess that some characters could get could get, get around this to their left side. Not Armor King now. Ooh, this looks like you can interrupt it with a cross jab. Yeah, there you go. Go ahead and hit me. Luckily he could do that from crouching. Pick your poison. And 
then it's negative 11 on block. What's the second hit? Negative 14. So you can kind of OS punish this with a cross jab. Not much, but you know. And on normal hit, it ain't shit. What's the difference between a confirm and a true combo? Well, you're wording it wrong. Um, in Tekken, we call true combos, as you say, natural combos, NC. So a natural combo, for example, if you want to test it, you put stand, action one, and action two, you put guard all, right? So natural combos, for example, one, two, that combos. Ignore the shit on the left. That lies to you in Tekken, unfortunately. Forward two, one, that's a natural combo. But the move I'm just ta I'm talking about now, down two, four, not a natural combo. Maybe on counter hit? No, not even on counter hit. Death Sandwich. That's a natural combo. 1 plus 2, 2. That's a natural combo. 1 plus 2, uh, 4. That's a natural combo. Down 3 plus 4, 1. Not a natural combo. Down 3 plus 4, 3. Not a natural combo. But on counter hit, it combos. That would be typed out as capital N, capital C, lowercase c. Natural combo on counter hit. Or counter hit natural combo, whatever you want to say. And then you get juggles, which is where the actual true combos are. <laughs> uh, that's not exclusive to the second, by the way. That that terminology is also in other 3D fighting games. So, you know, Soul Calibur and fucking Virtual Fighter. I don't know about BOA. So, I know that this is a wall combo, and that last hit hits as a low wall hit every time, pretty much. It's built into it. Uh, in the neutral, I don't know I don't know the worth of this move in the neutral. Uh, it's not one of those that hit resets the scaling, either. No delay. I like that the second kick has a ton of range, though. That's cool. Boom, and then it combos. That's cool. Ooh, first hit tracks a little bit. So that they're basically trying to make a new use for this uh, old down down two move, which used to be a bound move, and they attached this full string to it. So now it's like a that wall combo that I'm sure it floor breaks too for the last hit. Well, I'm not sure that it floor breaks. It might not, but uh, but the usage of this shit in the neutral, I don't know. Be guaranteed. That it looks like it's guaranteed. Interesting. Four and four. Not the side step. He recovers ducking. Not so much. Too slow. Yeah. <clears throat> So yeah, while steady four might even be guaranteed. Nope. So down three plus four. Might as well test this, right? I don't care about which throw it is. I just want to see if I can get away from it. This is a Marduk up forward four situation we have here. You can't get up in time. You can't wake up kick in time. So you can spring kick. 
or you could uh, toe kick, which is very risky. Both of those options, especially the armor kings. Which means, you know, those unique grounded options like uh, Jack's fucking double axe handle and shit like that. We'll get away from it too. Uh, Francisco, I have some shorter videos, a couple, a handful, with basic stuff. But I haven't, like, done, like, a full-on, like, tutorial with, with basics. I did one before Tekken 7 came out on console. I did one using Tag 2, and a lot of that stuff still applies here. It was actually a lot of the stuff that I explained before. I used Dragonov as an example. You know, the down forward one stuff. So I kind of, I got like a half hour video where I go over that stuff buried somewhere in my YouTube, but it's there. Usually I do stuff like this, though, that, that I'm doing right now with Armor King. And I got a couple of tips in there for new players uh, buried in there. <laughs> I should probably make some playlists. Like, beginner's playlist, right? Stomp. Straight to the point with the name. I can appreciate that. But before I get to this, let's go to a wall stage. What's his best wall carry? That used to work. Am I crazy? Hmm. Yeah, see? Last hit rescales on that string for 12 damage. Which means if you break the floor and then do it, it'll rescale up to 9 damage instead. Alright. Just wanted to test that real quick. Oh, no, no. Stage. If you're wondering why that scaling rule is there for floor break, blame Lily. I mean, it's always a safe bet to blame Lily for everything, you know? So, you can blame Lily especially for that one. She was doing some real stupid shit during the arcade days of this game. On that floor break stage. Alright, so, Stomp. Negative what, 12 or 11? Negative 12. Plus one on hit. Nothing special on counter hit. Hits grounded. 12 damage, nothing special on counter hit. I thought I said that already. Whatever, I said it again. Not a special on counter hit. Uh, just a useful low poke. 17 frames, decent speed, and it sets up giant swing. Uh, and I think it tracks it in both, in both sides. Fuck. You gotta get used to the recovery of this animation. Jesus. Alright, you gotta do it super late. Good range too, actually. Like I'm having trouble back dashing away from it. See? That's good. That's good. You want that in the low poke. And it tracks quite well. So yeah, pretty much I think it's the same applies for a regular king, you know. It's a good low poke. Yeah, you guys that are playing have been playing king in this game gotta realize that before King had this, he didn't have shit as far as low pokes. Oh, they could too. Thank you very much, Francisco. King, regular King didn't have shit regarding low pokes for like frame advantage. He had down forward four, that's like negative four on hit. 14 frames, but still, negative four on hit. He had the super slow, risky, plus on hit low, his version of sloth kick, down back three. And then he had the knockdown low for the drop kick. But he didn't have like a low poke that was like plus. He had Ollie kick, which is super unsafe. You know? So now he got this. And Armor King still has it too. The hell, a charity message popped up? Weird. And K demoted again. 
What character do you recommend for a new player that has never used a stick before? Well, you don't have to use a stick, but if you're trying to learn stick, I recommend staying away from characters with unique movements. But you're going to have to go through the backdash cancel, right? You're going to have to do that no matter which character you're playing as. But because of that, there are three characters currently in the game that have back sway. Those three characters are Brian, Mina, and Paul. Now, I would recommend Paul in regards to having a character with very simple juggles, very relatively simple inputs and shit. But he's a backsway character, so if you're gonna pick a backsway character, Paul's the way to be. You know, Paul's the one to be in my opinion. He's the least complex, uh, a lot, uh, a lot less to remember than the other two. Uh, the thing about backswaying is usually you could be pretty sloppy with your backdash cancel. You can do a core circle back, right? Which I'm doing right now. And you can still get away with a backdash cancel. But if you're a backsway character, you won't get that. You're going to get them swaying fucking back. And they're kind of going to be stuck in place. Unless you cancel that with a side step. And you don't want to be that way. Now, if you're playing on Korean stick, one tip that... This might not just apply to Korean stick. But one tip, one tip I could give you that will not give you a perfect backdash cancel. But it will avoid the backsway is to cancel backdashes with down instead of diagonal down back. It has the same effect. It's just uh, you're going to be a little more vulnerable to mids by like a frame or two. Because you're naturally moving the stick back to neutral and then back, back to neutral, down, back, down, back, down. While with a good traditional backdash cancel, you just kind of have to slide the stick down. So you're avoiding that extra ducking frame or two. But you know. Uh, when I talk about special movement outside of backdash canceling, I'm talking about shit like this. Not that this is necessary for this character. Uh, but if you care that much, I mean, play who you want to play as. Go, go with that first. But realize that there are some characters that, you know, you have to do some funky stuff to avoid. My girlfriend got mad at me for buying a super expensive stick. I like Bob. Is he a cool guy? Uh, I wouldn't call Bob a cool guy, but he has some cool moves. <laughs> uh, he's a middling character, you know? But uh, when you're new, you don't care about who gives a shit about tier list. Honestly, in regards to tiers, Tekken is about as close as it gets. The world tournament, the one, the, the playoffs for Tekken, the annual playoffs just happened. The championship ended. And the guy that won plays one of the worst bottom three, bottom feeding character both in design and in tears. <laughs> he went with the fucking bear, dude. So tears, they don't matter in second. You can pick gig ass and you'll still win with them. And the cool thing about those characters is nobody fucking plays them and they're full of gimmicky shit that nobody knows how to deal with. So you'll get you get away with even more shit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Bob is fine. He's not super complex. His punishment game is kind of weak in regards to launching because it's slow from standing. From crouching, he has a very fast launcher. While standing, 2-1. It's 14 frames. Average speed for launchers from while standing is 15. Uh, there are two, three characters with 13 frame while standing launchers. So they're the only ones that have faster while standing launchers than Bob. Oh yeah, and then the meter characters like Akuma and Eliza and Geese, they get really good damage with meter off of very fast options too. But that's kind of unique. So yeah, Bob has some really good tools, some good range, he has good damage. And, uh, oh, wow, you got a lot of bits, don't you? Thank you. And I did go, if you look at my YouTube, I did go through Bob, but that was season one. He's had some improvements, some pretty big ones, that I have not gone through yet. But, you know, most of his moves are the same. He has a down forward one poke. It's 14 frames instead of 13 frames. He has a 13 frame mid poke, back two. But it's worse on block. But it's attached to a string. Back to two. So yeah. You can play around with that stuff. And still do the same stuff with Bob. And then he has a hell sweep. He has a wave dash like this. And he has a hell sweep. Cross dash four. And then one plus two. The sweep into the fucking double palm. Very dangerous low. It's awful on block. But you know. When you're new and you're fighting other new people. They're not going to punish it properly on block anyway. But keep that in mind. And then he has a decent low poke. And down back three. Okay, so, Stomp, we talked about that, tracks both sides, plus one on hit, negative 12 on block, good range, difficult to backdash away from, at least up close. 
It sets up giant swing. It sets up back two pretty well, right? Plus one, uh, a jab will interrupt back two, but anything slower than a jab that doesn't crush highs, it's gonna lose or 12 frame is gonna exchange in your favor probably. Unless the 12 frame knocks down. Sorry, 11 frame. It's gonna exchange in your favor unless the 11 frame is like a magic four that knocks down or something. So yeah. Uh, corporate elbow. This is why people think this is from WWE. No, that's him mimicking Great Muda. <laughs> it's probably called the corporate elbow because um, Japan did the NWO before WCW did, and Chono was one of the members of J Japanese NWO. So, you know, that corporate is what they're talking about. They're not talking about corporate rock. So this is the Great Muda elbow. This is a fucking good move. It does good damage if they stay down. It is negative eight if they block it. Does, is it regular Kings Plus? I'm not sure about that. But still, look at the spacing you created here. With this kind of spacing, you're one backdash away from making things for the follow. With this kind of spacing, you're one backdash away from making this negative eight not matter at all, basically. See how far away you are? And it hits grounded and it does that new animation, right? When it hits grounded like Kings. If you stay down. Boom, they bounce off the floor, right? Now, I don't think in this case that gives, uh, in this instance, that gives anything guaranteed. In a lot of other cases, when you see that bounce off the floor animation, which is new to Tekken 7, uh, certain characters get guaranteed stuff. I don't think that's the case for Armor King. Like, I bet you they can sec. Like, if I hit him and then I'm gonna hit him, right? Oh, they can't tech off of that, huh? Hold up. How about this? We're going to not do this. We're going to go to restart settings. Player status is going to be face up. And then I'm going to go to record, right? I'm going to go whoop. Ah. That's okay. I just got to mash it. Right? I'm just going to mash it. We just want to see the low is guaranteed here. Nope. Okay. Maybe down three because it's faster. He does recover standing after all. Nope. All right. Sam. So yeah, nothing guaranteed. But it does give you a good Oki because that bounce stops teching apparently. Yeah, you can't tech off of that. That's good. And this top tier now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you get good Oki, but I guess you don't get anything guaranteed. I don't think it's down four hits grounded, right? Oh well, down four doesn't happen. The stomps happen. I forgot about that. Alright, uh, yeah, so Corporate Elbow, I don't think there's anything else to say about that. Taurus Cutter Edge, this is the down 3 plus 4, his version of the Ollie Kick. I don't know if you guys know about the lore of why, why people call this the Ollie Kick for King. Look up uh, Antonio Inoki versus Muhammad Ali. It's not a fun watch. <laughs> it's a very bad fight, but, you know. That's where the name comes from. Um, a lot of range on the low by itself. Look at that phantom hitbox. It's not even touching him in some cases. <clears throat> yeah. Negative on hit, just like regular kings, but it spaces well. So when you use it from this far back, you know, negative five isn't as bad from back here, right? Although Armor King does a pretty good job of chasing you down. <clears throat> on counter hit, negative three instead. And on counter hit is where the follow-ups combo, as I showed before. Pretty sure it also tracks very well. It is awful on block, but on block, it doesn't stop you from doing the follow-ups. That's why it's awful on block. So it's negative 16, but if you go for the follow-up, they have to block the follow-up. You get what I'm saying? So there's some mind games going on the punishing this. And then you got a high option now, which is new, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's new to this game. Uh, that's safe on block. If people stand block the mid. Before, all you had was that mid. That's awful, right? Six, negative 16. That's awful. 
Uh, Bob, for example, no, Bob cannot launch at negative 16. Bob launches at 17 frames. But you do get Cracker Dracker. Up forward, both punches twice, which is like 40 damage. That's uh, 15 frames or 16. I think that's 16. 15 or 16 frames for Bob. So he could punish this, that, you know, with that move. Cracker Jacker. Right, and then uh, we got that. That's safe on block, but duckable. So then the question becomes, these options, what do they do by themselves, right? Because then it becomes if they block the low and they swing, they're going to get counter hit. <clears throat> Nothing special there. What about this new high? Oop. So, to show you that in action, right? If I think he's going to go, oh, do that by itself, and I'm going to launch it, right? Right? But then what if he does the high? Bam! There you go. That's how this shit works. I can't even while standing for it. Which is uh, very fast, obviously. Is that called a 50-50? No. A 50-50 is two options. You're stuck guessing between those two options no matter what. I could just block the low and do nothing. I don't have to buy into that. A 50-50 is uh, getting in second will be getting put into a situation where... You have to guess between a mid versus a low, which typically happens during Oki, is one example. Um, sh shit like that. Or some people might go, the break is 50-50, uh, which is to say the grab break. And King has that, Armor King. Giant swing, you see his hands? It looks like he's reaching out with both hands. Usually in second, that means you break it with both punches on reaction. Giant swing breaks the rule. You have to break it with the left punch, one. Square on the PlayStation control. X on the Xbox control. One. Left. Jab. So because of that, when he does an actual grab that you have to break with both hands, you have you get mixed up. But that doesn't mean it's an actual 50-50 mix-up. That means the throw break is a mix-up. Because you could just duck the grab. Or make it whiff by sidestepping, backdashing. That's well. That's why they are. If you want to, there aren't. There isn't really a grab, a grappler archetype in second. But King and Armor King are about as close as it gets to it because they have that option that's unique to them. And that's not the only grab like that. The chain grab starters. See, same thing going on here. You have to guess one or two break between these two. But grabs are still highs. Most grabs. So you can still duck them. You know who had, what's an example of a true 50-50 built into a string? Eddie. He has that big ass flip kick, and then he has the mid launcher or the low knockdown. If you block that first big kick, you have to guess. You have, unless you're the new shit, like Akuma with the EXDP, invincible on frame one. That's like, you know, that's like reserved for three characters. But <laughs> outside of that, you have to guess block. You have no other option. It is a true 50-50, flip the coin. Of course, it's heavily in your favor for blocking, because sure, Eddie gets like good damage on the mid, and it's a knockdown low. But no matter which one you block, you could fucking kill the shit out of him. You get your biggest damage uh, punisher on him. That's just dependent on it if you punish it properly. Though. If you don't punish it properly, then what's the point? It's OP. All right, so yeah, we know that the high does a core screw. The mid is just a knockback, and they both combo on counter hit. The high is negative 9, the mid is uh, negative 16. And the ollie kick by itself is it hits grounded, and it's uh, negative 16. Shadow step. Why is this called shadow step? Am I pressing it wrong? Yes, I am. Ah, this is his little uh, pose. And he has a spear out of it, like an edge spear. <laughs> a really shitty looking edge spear. Not a cool Marduk Spear. He recovers crouching out of this. And I think there is some counter frames? This counter is lows, I think. It's like Dragonov's, uh, what's it, down forward 1 plus 2? Hey, oh, it auto low parries. Yeah, okay, so it auto low parries. <sighs> You can do CD moves out of it? 
I think you mean you can do while standing moves out of it. Or can you cancel it since it's a cross ass? You can do a while standing moves out of it. Uh, I don't know how. I'm trying. I'm trying to Jin way. It's not working. Like, Jin could cancel his uh, crouching demon stance back one. That shit. If you press down forward, he goes into a crouch dash. I'm not, yeah. If he does have it, it's a weird input. I don't know if anybody knows it. I'm trying. I'm trying various things. It's not happening. Uh, but here's an example of something that I'll bet actually high crushes. That stance probably ducks highs. Watch. If I try to jab him, let's see. See? So basically, this is something you could use if you want to... If you think your opponent's going to retaliate with a high or a low. It will beat out both options. Right? Of course, a mid is going to fucking punch you in the face or something. Or kick you in the face, right? My music's over. I gotta start a new play in this. Let's go with some Final Fantasy MMO music. Oh, one of my playlists got wiped because Nintendo destroyed this fucking account for sharing Smash music. God damn it. Let's go with Final Fantasy. <sighs> well, whatever. Alright, so Shadow Step has one unique move out of it. That's the spear. Doesn't like uh, I don't know if there's anything guaranteed. It looks like there might be. It looks like that down three was guaranteed. Let's try it. Nope, I don't think so. First of all, that's a hit throw. It is a mid though. Oh yeah, you gotta punish on him. Okay. Not a big one. Okay. Eh. Yeah, this is kind of whatever. I don't know the purpose of this. I'm sure he might have some good setup off of it. Maybe nothing. He's kind of whatever. Can he actually break this? That'd be whack if he could break this. That really is that shitty Ed Spear. That's just like the hug takedown. Not a fan. If I'm gonna punish someone for going high out of that, it's gonna be with a wall standing launch. Ooh, that's a natural? That's a natural. It's actually this move. Okay. So mid mid. It's not a natural. It's negative 16, but it pushes back a lot. Ooh, it does that on a counter hit. Down back two by itself is 14 frames. Zero. Zero. Negative 11. So he has a 14 frame Punisher. A good one. With good range. This character, man. Very, very dangerous with Punisher, this character. Very dangerous. Look at this. He punches you in the fucking thigh bone. Right in the thigh meat. Damn. Cheap. And if it hits him out of the air, it's a screw. That looks like a good hitbox. He punches pretty low there. Fucking good. Ah, that's plus nine on counter hit. Ooh, I didn't know that. All right. Uh, and this also screws. Yeah, fourteen frame startup. It's just a true fourteen frame. Let's see if Tekken Bai is lying to me. It lied to me before. It lied to me when I was going through uh, Marduk. The push. It says the push. It said the push was 14 frames. Bullshit. It's still 15.
You don't have to do instant shining wizard after that. It knocks back. As a matter of fact, if you did instant shining wizard after that, it whiff. See your name, but thank you for the follow. The judge. Oh. He can. Uh. You see? That's not 14 frames. The bot is lying to you. Oh boy. Now, ideally, if you were good, <laughs> you would have punished that with fucking Dark Upper. I was trying to, was trying to do it before, but I can't. Because that's, neg that's negative 14 on the dot. That's that terrifying 50 damage uh, counter hit launcher. Everybody's like, oh, check out this Mortar damage. They always show this fucking launcher. It was so whack. It's like, no shit. Let me uh, show you a bunch of Gigas launches from 4442. You see the same shit. But anyway, good range on that. And good damage. Good uh, frame advantage. Good move. I hate that shit. How people see like high damage attached to one move. And everybody's like, oh, this shit is crazy. Uh, they don't think about everything around the move. Like, Chorus to go forward to for Marta. It's 50, oh, is it 50? Uh, 50 or 59 damage? I forget. And it's like, yeah, but like, like, check this out. 23 damage, right? Sorry, 23 frames, right? This right here? I already know about this. Do you know about this? Plus 5 on hit, just like Marta's Chorus to go forward to. Marta's Chorus to go forward to, plus 5 on hit, on counter hit. It doesn't combo, it just adds a, an attack. This is two frames faster, and on counter, he gets a full fucking juggle. There's a shitload of moves like that in the game. The only thing that needs to be toned down about Marta's Core Circle Forward 2 is the floor break. That should not floor break. That's the only thing I would take away from that. Because then he has a 59 damage combo starter, <laughs> and that he shouldn't have. I guarantee you, Armor King will consistently get more than 59 damage off of this on counter hit. And everything else about this move is pretty much the same. Can I do perfect dark upper combo? I can't even block punish with a perfect dark upper, so probably not. Hitting a 14 frame dark upper? Nah, you gotta be one of those fucking Mishima players, man. Like uh, JDCR, we'll be seeing him do that. Alright, so this is a fucking really good move, right? So this is down back to 2-4, right? On block, it's probably safe, but you can duck it, obviously, right? Negative 9, yeah. Negative 9 with pushback. Ooh, that's good. And this is horribly unsafe. So the only purpose of that is uh, maybe the wall carry, too. Let's see. I just want to see how far. That could be some wall carry, too. You know? So that's good. But it is not natural. So. Oh, wow. It's about the same range as forward two. Yeah, that's good, man. One frame faster. And it knocks down. If you hit him out of the air, screws. What else is there to talk about? Foot sweep. All right, so we were just talking about this fucking move. So I think before, you could kind of like uh, with uh, Lars, you want to side walk right, I think, with this move. Oh, I didn't check the tracking on down back too either. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh well, not even. The timing to side uh, step and walk Lars to your right is kind of strict. In this, oh, in this case, it's not as strict, which is nice. So if you could side, you could uh, reliably side step into buttons against this. Ooh, just want to get a 
full size step in. Alright, yeah. See, if you do it too early, you're gonna get clipped. You gotta let the whole thing happen. And then, whiff punish. And you're gonna get the rear. <laughs> Give me that leg, motherfucker. Oh, shit, Michinoku driver. He doesn't have the Viagra driver, though, like King does. You ever wonder what the V driver is in King's move list? What the V stands for? That's the Viagra driver, Magnum Tokyo. And it hits grounded, which is a nice bonus. It is, of course, awful on block, as any move like this typically is. Negative 26. Yep. It's one of those. Uh, 23 frames is pretty much not seeable, but if you're abusing it as your primary low, it's going to be fucking seeable. Uh, so, yeah. It's a good move. Very good move. King kind of has his own variation of that. It's not like a foot sweep like that is. It's uh, the fucking sloth kick, basically. Like armor's full cross. Uh, armor. Like Marduk's full cross down forward form. <clears throat> Does the same thing. Counter hit juggle starter. Not for Marduk, but for regular King. Marduk gets uh, other stuff guaranteed on counter him. Low drop kick. This is exactly like regular King's, pretty much. Knocks down on normal hit. Uh, you have to do weird shit to punish it on block. Knock this probably still gets a full launch off of this, doesn't he? Let me see. It's probably just like uh, regular King in regards to block punishing it. I'm curious about one other character punishing it, too, actually. I'm not talking about this move. Because you do float him when you hit him really, really, really quickly out of it. But generally, people will low parry this move to get consistent good punishes on it. It is reactable, but it's something about the animation that makes it kind of hard to see. It does high crush. Oh wow, no, but it, I, it high crush, sorry, it high crushes the startup, but it puts King and Armor King airborne. So if it's like a one two, you're gonna get floated like that. So that, I forgot to mention that part. But yeah, go catch you. Yes sir, he does get a proper punish. So that's nice. Negative 20. I don't think it's fast enough for Marduk to get what I think he could get. I may be wrong here. Let's see. So, unlike the other... Was it negative? What was it 18? Whatever the fuck that situation was. Where you wouldn't float him. In this case, you can float him. Move is stupid to punish. Yeah, man. Watch him go under both Jazz and Marduk because he's so tall. Ah, good. Damn it. It's a punish, but, you know, it's not a float because it's 21 frames. Too slow. Oop, what am I doing? I was always curious about how my character could punish this. Nope. Come on, grab him. He could do it from crouching. Oh, he can't unless he's in VTS? Why is he not? He gets up too fast for me to crouch? That makes no sense. It's not letting me crouch, uh, ground grab him. That's stupid. Lame. Very disappointed. Let's try the uh, Williams pickup. 
thing is, you gotta hit him with something with a really good hitbox. So even though you can flow him with 20 frames or faster, you need a really fucking good hitbox, man. That's a rare thing. It's like more strict to punish that than it is to punish uh, Eddie back 3-3. Three, three. And that's really what makes this move annoying. Because then if you fuck up your punishing you whiff, he's in position to get the low get-up kick on you. It's fucked up. Oh, no, he doesn't recover on the floor. Oh, no, when you block, he does. See? Face down, feet towards. You're going to get hit with the low get-up kick. It's fucked up. Oh, this will pick up, though. But that doesn't mean anything in this game because it's not tag two. Ah, boy. Yeah, so that move is still obnoxious. I just did that. Nah, her down four, it, it needs to hit grounded. Her down four doesn't. I'll try it again. I did not try down four four, but I'm pretty sure it won't work. Let's see. We might as well be sure. This is it's like it's more strict than Eddie back three three. So down four typically does not hit grounded. So I think this follows that rule. Let's see. Down three does hit grounded. See? It just whiffs. Oh, shit! <laughs> Classic Anna. You have to be right in his fucking face. <laughs> you saw I had to move forward into it. <laughs> you might as well low period at that point. Alright, I'll just make him dash and do it. Oh my god. You see? <laughs> so weird. Yeah, oh, you don't want this to whip, dude. I don't know how I feel about this. It, 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 it's... Yeah. It's so janky. It's like, fuck. <laughs> Hi, Anna player. It's all weird and weird. <laughs> yeah. Classic Anna. It's, that's pretty much Anna in a nutshell. That's her main problem in this game, in my opinion. It's it's because in tag two you could do shit like you know you could do uh, sorry um you could do like this and then you would tag out. So her pickups were because of this her pickups were far more consistent in tag two, which really made her obnoxious to fucking fight. But here you got to be like right in her fucking face and then you still have to pick up a down forward for. Uh, And even then, the damage is not bad, but whatever. Still 61 or whatever that damage is. I played Anna for a bit when she came out. It was my first time ever playing that character. It was kind of fun. You know, characters that I hate fighting against, I find that playing as them for a while kind of gives me, I don't want to see a newfound appreciation for them, but like, uh, more of a realization how badly you could punish them for abusing some of their shit. Sometimes you just gotta have, you, you gotta have that in your hands and have other people beat it for you. For you to really feel it, you know, feel the lack of range in Miguel, for example. Feel the lack of tracking and the limited poking, sometimes limited poking of Lily, sometimes not that limited, but you know. Her poking is actually not that limited. <laughs> but how, you know, how risky Lily is to use, you know, you feel that when they're in your hands and you fight against anybody with a fucking brain. Nina pick up better? That's weird. Nina's isn't, Nina shouldn't be better there. Should be the same hitbox. Alright, so we were talking about down back four. It's the same old, same old shit. Um, This is actually a classic, uh, classic good setup for up forward one plus two, which is not really a setup, but up forward one plus two is a classic good follow up for this because you kind of, if you get up at all, you have to block it, kind of, kind of, 
Let me see, because you can't tech that. I think Armor King used to pause before doing his version of Up Portal Musu, right? Yeah, see, I can't mash. I can't step in time. I can't armor. If I stand straight up, you know, but if I hold back, I have to block that shit. If I stand straight up, I'm good to make this shit with. Of course, you could do the stand straight up instant while standing also. Wow, I hit him standing. <laughs> so yeah, keep that in mind. Oh, it didn't turn around. Really thought it was gonna turn around. <sighs> Stomping headbutt. Funny name. Yeah, it's still plus on block. Pushes back a bit. But it is plus three on block. This used to bound. Whew. All right, so you gotta walk it. All right, if you go left, you gotta walk it. At least his armor can. It does come from that direction, so it makes sense. special on wait hold on I was about to say not a special encounter hit no oh, is that a combo starter no thought so I wonder if you hit this at an angle Get guaranteed follow ups off of this way. Yeah, guaranteed follow ups for sure. That's a good move. It's slow, but it's good. Very good. It's probably set up with that kind of knockdown. Plus seem to get anything better than uh, plus nine off of this. <laughs> and it can punish. And it's 12 frame punish is good. Is it 12 frame? The slap into the kick? Or is that 14 frames? And it has like a good mid-level punish. Before launcher, before standard launchers. She has a good mid-range run. I forget if it's 13 or 14. I think she has good 12 and 14, right? Right? Two greens, 12. So she has a really good 14 frame, I think, with good range. The slap. And the slap homing, uh, the homing slaps, those have a uh, really good oki. If people hold back, they eat shit. She's one of those that has a guaranteed follow up where if they hold back, that guaranteed follow up turns into a full juggle. The fucking shitty animation roll on her ass kick. Forward, forward, four, or whatever. Three plus four. Alright, so you can cancel this into a. Uh... Oh, okay. 
You have to press this fast. Gimmicky, but he has it. As if people are going to react to that headbutt in any way. All right, back one. Key move for King and Armor King. Back one, two. This is 12 frame punish. Back one, uh, we showed this earlier, is a counter hit juggle starter. Plus five on hit, negative seven on block. It is a high, but you know. 12 frame, bam, and then you have to like time this to get them to float. It's fucking weird, but you gotta do it. You pick this character, so do the thing. You had to delay it a bit. Trouble doing it now. Oh boy. Oh yeah, versus females. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. The fact that oh there it is. There, that that was the float that you won. So and the slash versus females, they could do a, they could get into a slap fight. Which is pretty funny. I mean, you know. It's not that as serious as people make it out to be, though. Alright, here's another counter hit string. This one starts juggles. It's a screw now, though, so he doesn't get a full juggle, but... And you can go right into this. This would be a fucked up on the floor break. Ooh. You gotta do it late. Fifteen frame counter hit string mid mid high mid 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 guaranteed negative one on hit negative nine negative twelve negative seven counter hit you still get it sweet damn it what's the timing on that so finicky. Trying to delay it, see if I can get that. You can't do it, it's too low. It sucks. I think it's the angle. If you can't do that, it's the angle that fucks it up. Back to DR combos here, huh? I mean, that's still really good damage, and that was really easy to do. Doesn't work. Well, all right. I'll let the combo makers uh, come up with shit. So yeah, mid, mid, high. Delay that. Man, delaying it loses the uh, the counter hit. The first two combos. So this is this is a lot like Dragon Ball's down back two one two really. More so than the kickster. By the way, back one does not track. I know that already. Yeah, so. Woo, tracks. It is a lot like Dragon Ball's down back 2-1-2. It tracks to his right side.
second hit on normal hit doesn't give anything. What is this? What are you trying to show me here? <laughs> it's a high. Her super's a high, though. I mean, you know, you can see what's happening. That stupid Eliza string, she ducks when she recovers. So you're swinging over her head because that's a high. The good thing about that super for Anna is it has a shitload of range considering she's just slapping. She like teleports forward and she slaps you. It's like one of those, what's it, 13, 14 frame high, safe on block slippers. But yeah, that's why, that's hap that's why that happens. The fact that she does the kick that's supposed to force you to crouch, but you don't crouch because you're doing armor, and then you swing with a high when she recovers crouching. That makes sense. I mean, it sucks, but it makes sense. I hate that fucking string, yo. That string is so lame. You should be able to jab her out of that shit. I hate when they attach shit like that to launchers. I really do. It's fucking really stupid. Is this troll kick or toll kick? Toll kick. That's a cool name. Boosh. Sweet chin. Another special encounter. Right? This is one of those that you gotta hold back, right? 16 for Oh, what? Oh, you can't hold back? Guaranteed follow -up? We got him. Shoulder exists. Mm. Now, nah, down three plus four. He recovers too slow. Shoulder. You have to dash for it, but I got it before. You have to delay it a bit. It's fucking weird. Like, while the legs are falling, you gotta clip them. Negative 10 with pushback. So, I guess only Gigas will probably punish this. You got the block the tip. Nobody's gonna punish this. Decent move. 16 frames. Not bad. And, uh, no counter hit properties. Same shit. Oh, that's one of those that's going to send them flying and then they wall splat. That's definitely one of those you want to do after a wall bounce. I mean, he probably has something better, but that's one option. Toe kick, this does the stunner, right? Stone go! Stone go! Ah, hold back, you get frame number four. I'm not getting it at all now. Hmm, they hold back, you get plus four instead of plus two. Not bad. So the toe kick by itself. Negative 11. This is just like, if you really want to win with a stunner, <laughs> that's pretty much all this is about. It might get some good Oki. I think the stunner used to get good Oki in Tag 2, I think, right? That was new in Tag 2, if I'm not mistaken. That's the push. 
it's uh, a little on the slow side. But you already know, right? On counter hit, you gotta get a quick dark upper in. There you go. Whew. But if you want something easy, you could just. All that good shit. Straight arrow. Oh, the auto sidestep right move. King used to have that shit, right? Regular King? Uh, the push is also plus one, so it's actually good in that regard. Good setup for giant swing. You know, same as down three. Good setup for giant swing, good setup for back one. That's why it's slower. So this is negative 13, but eh. It also kind of leans back, so you might get like a back swing blow effect out of it. Interesting. <laughs> I knew it. Let me do it without the sidestep. These tend to be better than regular sidesteps. It's weird. Case in point. He gets around down 4 1. And that's another one he gets guaranteed follow ups. That high kick to shoulder, that's back three. Back three. Same thing here. He gets a... Okay. So go for the shoulder. Straight arrow. Uh, negative 13, but uh, pretty good move. Uh, yeah, so you can kind of get a weird double sidestep right if you sidestep right into it, or you can just go right into it, and it's better than a regular sidestep right. Dark Destroyer. This is the fucking show you get. You can cancel it into a crouch. It's not special. Chop. That's a homing move. I forgot to check the... Tracking on this. Yeah, no tracking here. Nope, nothing. Uh, back, back. Hmm. Yeah, if you go towards it, you gotta block it, but... Oh, wow. You commit to a walk. <laughs> I got around it one time. <laughs> you can time it pretty late. That's sick. So you can step away from it. Water Parting Chop. That's a sick name for a chop. Woohoo! Kenta Kobashi would be proud. Negative six. Shoulder, right? Yep, that's guaranteed. This is one of those cases where you could rely rely on the combo thing. Because it's telling you that you cannot hold back for that. Yeah, that was mentioned earlier. Shoulder could punish. So, high homing move. Oh, you could combo with that too. That's good damage. Never mind that. 
Oh, he can't do it up with up? Okay, he can. Once again, another one that's just like King. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a combo into it like King does with his Rage Drive. But, just like with King, this uh, crushes very early. And it jumps super high. You're going to jump over a lot of shit with this. So. You get kind of gimmicky with it. And I believe it's safe on block? Maybe not. No, it's not safe on block at all. Oh, get fucked. Yeah, fuck. It's more punishable than I thought, apparently. Ah, Jumbo Surudani, plus five. Negative eight. I think this used to get the best sandwich knockdown counter hit. 21 frames. in the air. The damage is low, so it's like a weird-ass filler, right? Oh, I didn't know that would do that. Oh, I forgot he has this as the start of his 10 hit. So his counter hit down forward two. Oh, but you could fuck up the counter hit by doing down forward two one and it still combos. Shit. And that's mid high. Forgot about this. And it's safe on block and it's a natural combo. For plus five. So he has one of those, like, yeah, it's punishable with an asterisk thing going on. Down forward 2 1. Alright, so yeah, jumping me. It's not that great, but it's not awful. It's a hop kick. It's a hop kick. 15 frames, negative 13 on block, doesn't track. Crushes on frame 9. And yes, you can do it from crouching. Capital punishments. The classic king shit. Now, you can get kind of cute and try to get kind of random with this. But, you know, good players will know. They'll make it whiff. Or they will jab you out of it and uh, juggle you. Uh, why is neutral negative one frames? What are you talking about neutral? Uh, neutral is zero. This is plus three on block. Plus two. Is that a nerf? No, plus three. Plus two. That's a nerf. This used to be plus uh, three. Well, plus two is still good enough for back one to counter hit any masters. Uh, does it force crouch? I forget. Yeah, oh, it forces crouch, so plus two is fine. It might as well be plus three. Uh, in case you're wondering why I'm saying that, typically fastest moves from crouching is 11 frame while standing or a 10 frame crouch down. So, yeah. Uh... And of course, whoops, if you hold it, you get that unblockable. And it starts combos on normal hit, right? Easiest combo ever, good damage. It's still plus three. So the second by line to me. That's plus two, amigo. That's plus two. 
Now there is two active frames. So if you get it to be blocked on the second active frame, then it'll be an actual plus three. Kings is plus three. Okay, so Armor Kings is plus two. It's a huge... If you get that move to whiff, you gotta punish it. That shit recovers super slow on whiff. So, if in case you're wondering how to punish that shit when King and Armor King abuse it, either be brave and just stick a jab out, jab him out of the air. You can kind of react to it. It's slow. It's 35 fucking frames. You can react to him jumping in time. Uh, or just try to move around and make it whiff. And then you get a free launch on him. Burning Knuckles and Unblockable, if you're up close, he turns around with it, just like King, which gives it a ton of fucking setups. Tech traps is like no sure is a fucking setup for this fucking move. You'd have to look at, you know, the true, like, King tech monsters like Majin to find those, though. He has the fucking scissors kick, Bukati. King Buka. This does hit grounded. It does that really cool animation when they get hit. That's like a super unique animation. I love it. Whee! Yeah, she makes him flip. Imagine selling it like that. Um, it is unsafe. I don't think it does anything special on counter, does it? No, it doesn't. I don't even think it gives that good OP. It just looks fucking cool. Combo starter for this? I don't think so. If it says plus two to plus three, that's because there's two active frames. Look at Tekken Bot. You see where it says ACT? Uh, next to the starter frames. It says one out of seven right now for the scissors kick. It says one out of two for capital punishment. That means if you hit on active frame two, like a 2D fighter with a meaty, for example, it will be plus three on block instead of, is it, uh, yeah. What do you mean on counter hit? Wait, you talking about scissors kick or capital upper? No, it's not. Nina's 444 is a plus if she techs. She has to take off the floor. He can't tech off of scissors kick. So if you're talking about scissors kick, it's not a combo starter. I don't think so. See, it whiffs. Nothing. Oh, what the fuck? He could tech. He could tech. He can tech. Oh shit! He just need a counter hit. All right. Well, it doesn't seem like anything's guaranteed, though. Nothing's guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. I was trying to take before, but you can't really mash it. It seems like you have to mash it. Yeah, you have to like kind of. It's like Dragon Ball three plus four. You have to time it. But yeah, there's no guaranteed follow-up here. They could tech off the hit. Counter hit or not. Can they do that? Can you tech off of blocks? Oh, you can. That makes it safe. That's fucking cool. This move is cooler than I thought. It's like timing is weird. Can't even execute it. Is that a punish? Well, that's unique if that's a punish. Okay, it's not. I was just wasn't holding back in time. So yeah, um, what was it, Francisco? You, you was it Francisco? Was asking. Uh, you were asking if, uh, is it, if there's any like, what is a 50-50? This is an example. If I block this and he gets up off the floor, Tex, chances are he's gonna be unable to sidestep certain mids like that. He will not be able to sidestep that. And this low, for example. So he would have to guess mid versus low in this one very specific situation. 
Uh, will this review take a quarter day? Longer than that. I'm actually going to stop it soon. I'm at 2 hours and 45 minutes, and I will be uploading it to the YouTube. Remember, my reviews are super in-depth. I'm only up to move number 51 out of... Well, he's got a lot of grabs, so... You know, it doesn't take that long. So it's really more like move number 51 out of... 75? I made pretty good progress here. Crazy stomp out of 75 in regards to like real moves. Yeah, so scissors kick, uh, better than I thought. Better than I fucking thought. And that might be a good place to end it. I might, I might go into the dashing moves next time. Yeah. Scissors kick is a pretty good place to end it. So it's safe on block if you tech. Uh, you don't get any guaranteed follows because they can tech. But you probably get good frame advantage if you tech and you connect that. That does hit grounded, by the way. Let's see if this is see? Man, that even his ass even hits him. So, excuse me. One thing I want to talk about before I leave. So next time I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna start talking about these. Uh, you know, these dashing moves. And I'm gonna start with underhanded, right? Which is a funny ass name for this move. This is fold forward neutral. That's what the star means. Fold forward neutral two. And just like uh, regular king, there's counter hit properties. Regular king gets a throw. He gets a juggle start on counter hit, right? And it's plus four on, uh, sorry, plus seven on hit. And it's probably super lost punch on block, just like king. Yeah, see, it's very bad on block, just like regular king. So the cool thing about this move is wave dash. Now in wave dash, you could buffer in a forward input to do forward forward moves out of it easily, right? By doing quarter circle forward. Forward neutral, quarter circle forward, forward four. For example, and that's forward forward four. Here's forward forward two. Forward neutral, quarter circle forward, forward two. And you'll get the same thing, right? And that, that's the same trick to do instant shining wizard out of it, right? Oop. See? Here is basically a low, a decent low that you could use out of wave dash. You have to do the delay, but it's there. And that little pause you do after the dash is kind of what might get them to twitch duck or twitch hop kick. And that you can use to your advantage. You know, you could grab them out of a hop kick. You could just while standing for float them if they were to hop kick you and you could uh, get a juggle. You know, you could do a. Uh, uh, delay jab <laughs> for a real safe option that would float them. You know, if they duck, you could delay into a while standing two, a while standing one. Sorry, down forward one. You could do anything, anything, pretty much. If you get them to hesitate, and then. And that comes out not seamlessly. There's a pause there, but it comes out pretty, pretty good out of wave dash. See? Get creative. Get creative. So that applies to all these fucking moves. Dash moves, up forward moves, which I would really just use hot kick, honestly. You know? While standing moves, full crouch moves. I mean, not full crouch down forward too, because that's going to overlap with dark upper. But full crouch grabs. He's forced to make that choice. Oh, yeah. Uh, you do these videos for more characters? Yeah, they're all up on the YouTube. If you scroll down, the Tekken bot here? Yeah, here. The Tekken bot here is uh, overlapping with my YouTube link, but um, if you scroll down, I did these uh, mostly season one, unfortunately. But I've done most of the cast. Ah! And they're all very long, <laughs> unfortunately. The ones that are short aren't very good. Like, I did a Eliza one in like two hours. That character's way more complex than that. 
But it's when I when the game had just come out, I started doing these. So you know, I get better as I go on. And you know, same thing applies to his wild running. You know, just like the shining wizard, you can do his wild running three. He has a pretty good wild running three. A better like King doesn't have access to a slash kick. This is basically his slash kick, that jumping boot. King doesn't have that. He has running explosive. That's another thing Armor King has over regular, regular King. A regular ass running three. A pretty good one. If you don't fuck it up like I'm doing right now. There it is. So yeah. But he, don't, he does still get running exploder, which is a classic cross-up move because the whole body, it's like a cycle crusher. The whole body is a hitbox. All right, I'm getting really fucking hungry, and I'm smelling some good cooking out there. So, uh, and I got to go out to buy some groceries, too. Which is, it's very bad to buy groceries when you're hungry, because that's when you start buying really stupid shit. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to upload this to the YouTube, which if I make the Tekken bot vanish, there it is. There's also a link if you scroll down. And I'll get back to this soon. Outside of playing Dragon Quest on the side. And maybe more Mario Kart Online and shit like that. We'll see. Uh, I might even pop up later on tonight. I don't know. I got some shit to do, but we'll see. I'll see you guys when I see you. Thanks for tuning in. And all that good stuff. Adios.